much more peaceful. That was starting to get me a little vexed. Yeah, how, you guys are doing good? Okay, it's kind of tapping into the mood. I know this is a peace vest, so it kind of goes with it being kind of chill. Um, but I will encourage you, do what you need to do. Uh, we've got several hours of programming before you, so do what you do to not become dormant. So if you need to stand up and stretch uh, or walk around in circles or go up to the farmer's market and buy some Swiss chard, uh, I empower you to do so. Just come back and share your Swiss chard with us. Um, there are restrooms there. Um, materials for everything that's being presented today is just behind you uh, by the glass sliding door that comes up. So check that out when you got a chance. Um, yeah, again, Peace Fest, we're here uh, to, uh, to be a unified presence. But my job, I'm going to try to stir you up a little bit within that framework when I get a chance, <laughs> maybe through a few more poems later on today. All right, our next speaker is Janet Marino from the Whatcom Peace and Justice Center. Janet Marino is executive director of the center located in the Herald Building in downtown Bellingham. Officially opened in 2003, the Whatcom Peace and Justice Center promotes lasting peace, social justice, and a culture of nonviolence at home and worldwide. They accomplish this through partnerships, education, and direct action. Uh, join me in welcoming Janet Marino. I'm a little bit shorter. So I just wanted to thank everyone from uh, Peace Day and from the Foundry, everyone who's collaborated to make this happen today. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to come and speak about our organization. As he said, our center opened in 2003 in response to uh, the US's involvement in Afghanistan and Iraq uh, under the original director, Jamie Donaldson. Um, most of the core volunteers that helped begin the center nine years ago are still active in the local peace community, either in, at, directly at the Peace and Justice Center or with the vigil on Friday afternoons. And many have served a term or more on our board of directors and have helped to shape the policies and growth of the center. The center's involvement in the communities had many different incarnations over the years, but one particular program that's had a lasting effect and resonance within the Whatcom County is our Alternatives to Military Service program. We've cultivated a relationship with nine area high schools, which we visit throughout the quarter during the school year. We go during lunch periods and we table in the same location that military recruiters do, but with the mission of peace. We call this counter recruiting. We provide information on funded options for peop young people who are seeking college funding, such as AmeriCorps, City Year, and others. We bring financial aid information from the community colleges and technical colleges. And we developed some of this media for our own program, but we'd like to thank the American Friends Service Committee and the War Resisters League for making their brochures, posters, and media available to organizations like ours. And if you visit the website of either of these organizations, you can view full-color posters and counter-recruiting materials that are available if you know someone who is considering joining the US military. The goal of that pro project is to help young people make an informed decision about service in the US military. We encourage them to ask tough questions about the benefits and training that have been offered to them by recruiters and to take a look at the statistics for people who are exiting military, the military in terms of job training and prospects, college financing, and health. We encourage them to slowly and carefully read over the terms of a military service contract, which is something that they don't often have the opportunity to do when they are signing. In addition to the AMS program, we celebrate the International Day of Peace every year with a large celebration. Last year, we had 800 attendees at this celebration. This year's event will be held on Wednesday, September 21st, and begins with a rally at Maritime Heritage Park, emceed by local musician and activist Robert Sarzen Blake, followed by a march through downtown to Assumption Church on Cornwall Avenue, where our main event will be hosted by radio personality Joe Tehan from The Joe Show, with the special guests, the Colson Chorus, and our keynote speaker this year will be Rosalinda Guillen, She's the executive director of Community to Community Development. Rosalinda has um, an amazingly packed schedule, so we feel very happy to have her this year. She is an activist uh, for farm workers and immigration rights. The Whatcom Peace and Justice Center also acts as an incubator for community projects. One of our primary goals is to nurture community leadership in the field of peacemaking. 
For high school students and college students, we have internships available with guidance for development, developing and implementing projects in their own schools and communities. Seniors are invited to do their culminating projects with the Peace Center. College, uh, college students are encouraged to do working internships with the center on a variety of topics and interests. Any individual with a good idea can approach us and we will see what we can do to connect them with the resources and the support they need to see it through. Every year, both alone in conjunction with other area organizations who have missions similar to ours, we sponsor documentary screenings, educational events, and speakers in the field of peace and justice. This year, we have worked with Whatcom Human Rights Task Force, Socialist Alternative, Western Washington University, Veterans for Peace, and Iraq Veterans Against the War, and many more. We're going to continue those collaborations this year. Many of our educational events are planned well in advance, in advance, and there are some that are in response to world events, and we change as we go along throughout the year. We hope that you will join our online community on Facebook, our monthly email newsletter, and calendar to keep up with what we're doing in Bellingham and beyond. Um, this year, we're going to have a number of community members attending a rally in Washington, D.C. in October called Stop the Machine, Create a New World, and this particular event has tens of thousands of people who have taken a nonviolence pledge to Occupy Freedom Plaza in Washington, D.C. So if you can follow us online, we're going to be creating our own media for this event. We're not going to be relying on corporate media to report what's happening in Washington, D.C. this year, so I encourage you to follow along. If you're interested in donating to Whatcom Peace and Justice or following what we do, we have remittance envelopes on the back table back there, and uh, a $35 donation will sponsor a visit to an area high school, and I encourage you to participate in that. Thank you very much for your time. All right, thank you, Janet. Next on our program, we have Kelly Linville, uh, who is joining us today. We have the honor and privilege of her uh, sharing some words with us. Kelly is a long-standing community member and also former state representative. Um, join me in welcoming Kelly Linville to the stage. You'll take care of it. That's a good thing. As long as someone does it for me. Um, I want to thank... Uh, this organization for inviting me to come today and speak. I appreciate the um, problem-solving expertise in the community of Bellingham. People really are focused on wanting to resolve conflicts, um, create a better community for everyone, and um, and I appreciate that. Peace is something that you don't just talk about. Peace is something that you live. It's the way you conduct yourself every day. Sometimes um, there is a perception that a peaceful person is weak, that a peaceful person has no principles, that a peaceful person can't get anything done. And then I think of Gandhi, or I think of Martin Luther King, or any of the present day heroes we have in the peace movement. And I think all of us know that those were the people that we looked to for strength, and for principles, and for character, and for results. So um, that's what I believe um, our political process should be. Uh, having been a state legislator and knowing that uh, we are so polarized, that we are so quick to blame, that we are so quick to not respect the, the breadth of opinions that people hold very dearly and very sincerely, whether we agree with them or not, that um, these kinds of activities, this opportunity for people who care about peaceful resolution to problems, respectful, effective ways of getting things done, um, can meet together and share their feelings, their ideas, their philosophy, and their way of getting our community moving forward. So I don't have a whole lot more to say than that, but I was a, I, I 
I felt it necessary to say that I appreciate what you do and that I appreciate what all of us can learn from listening to each other, from caring about our community first, and for making sure that um, 